Can artificial intelligence write a program in the most difficult programming language in the world, in assembly language? Let's check it out! Hi, nice to see you on this channel. Will people working in one of the highest paying professions be left without a cent in the future? Will developers become unemployed or have to grow carrots? That's the question. Let's talk today with one of the most famous artificial intelligence systems in early 2023. Detailed information can be found in the description of the video. Please be sure to read it. Seemingly a simple task to write a short program, however very tricky. Why? First a brief explanation. We have two very similar terms. Assembly language or assembler language is a low-level programming language. And the second assembler that is a program that translates the source code written in machine language and saved with simple text commands into machine code understood by the processor. In everyday language the same word assembler might be often used for both of these terms. And the context of the sentence shows which meaning we think about. Why is the task that tricky? First, low-level languages are considered the most difficult. In fact, processors are programmed with zeros and ones. Alright, I am exaggerating a bit. Using simple text commands that correspond to the commands understood by the microprocessor and later translate into sequences of zeros and ones, that is bits, which, when collected in 8, form bytes. In most situations, it is one to one ratio, so you need to understand how the chip works internally, or at least to some extent. Only extensive experience in IT allows you to efficiently navigate through this whole mysterious mechanism. Although in detail, this is certainly a topic for an additional video. Secondly, assembly language programming requires a good knowledge of the entire computer hardware. Thus, you need to know not only how the microprocessor itself works, but also how the cooperating integrated circuits work, responsible for creating graphics and music, or for cooperation with peripherals. Thirdly, how is the artificial intelligence system, which was first publicly shown in 2022, supposed to know how computers from the 1980s worked? And fourthly, QuickAssembler is a relatively unknown assembler in the world. It was developed in Poland and is the best known here. Therefore, the task I have set, as you can see, is not an easy one. Ok, and what did the great artificial intelligence answer? Of course, AI got away with it. However, it must be admitted that the arguments given are quite reasonable and prove some knowledge of the subject. Surprising, does artificial intelligence like retro computers? Amazing! However, if you think this is the end of the video, then you are in a big mistake. Still, the most interesting things ahead. Let me just add that my conversation was in English, because in that language the system was more talkative. But more on that in a moment, although it is basically a polyglot and speaks several languages. However, next attempts did not lead to generating the required code in assembly language, unfortunately. The MOS 6502C microprocessor mentioned in the question, sometimes in a slightly modified version, conquered the world and was used in many other computers and consoles. And interestingly, it is still used today in some simple devices, of course in a modern and improved release. Who would have thought? However, the machine code is not portable, which means we will not run code written for example for the Atari 800XL on the Commodore 64 computer. And this is not because the processor will not understand the instructions, but because different integrated circuits cooperate with the processor in both computers. For example for graphics and music, and they require completely different handling. Back to my conversation with artificial intelligence, I logged out and connected again. Then I asked the same question, and this time I got a much more interesting answer and a ready program. Ready, hmm. Interestingly, when I spoke Polish, the system still did not want to generate any code despite numerous attempts. Pure coincidence or the impact of several different versions of the engine. Perhaps the more extensive one does not support Polish. Or maybe both. I am not sure about that. What can these different versions of the system engine vary from? This is a question for the creators. I can only guess that they might use a different knowledge base, so input data for the learning process was slightly different. 
This system does not search online the internet for the necessary information, but uses a previously prepared knowledge treasury. It is also possible that algorithms were trained on a different group of users. Yes, yes, the AI system is initially tested with the help of sometimes hundreds and sometimes thousands of users who evaluate which answers are right and which are not. And this, over time, allows it to better meet the expectations of users. Anyway, this learning doesn't end when the system is made publicly available. You can still rate the level of satisfaction with each answer. Perhaps, depending on the engine, the assumptions underlying algorithms were slightly modified. If you have more information, please write in the comments. What does a program generated by artificial intelligence look like? At first glance, not bad, but you can immediately see that it is not been adapted to quick assembler. Small tweaks should be enough. Wait a minute, is it sure that only small? However, a slightly longer analysis makes me have more and more doubts. The program is definitely not optimal and it seems to contain bugs. Let's quickly rewrite it on the legendary computer. Let's do it now. An attempt at assembly, because this is the name of the conversion process of the source file containing the program text into the processor machine code, of course it ends with a lot of errors. Let's first rewrite the program to meet quick assembler requirements. It will take a while, I will not explain the details why so and not otherwise, but in a nutshell I'm leaving the processor's comments, but I'm changing the so-called pseudo instructions as required by QuickAssembler. Pseudo instructions, also called assembly directives or pseudo opcodes or pseudo operations, are the instructions that are not translated into machine language, but they tell the assembler how to prepare and assembly the program. This term is also used for instructions that generate data. Ok, time to run. A new problem again. Quick Assembler is displaying a warning that the program will be loaded in an illegal area. This area is reserved for the floppy drive management and for DOS. And definitely no other program should be placed here. Oops, that's a serious mistake. Next try. We are changing the starting address of the program and nothing. We are fixing one more serious bug. Well, the program refers to the special registers called shadow registers, to which the system rewrites data from other registers at certain times. It is about cooperation with an integrated circuit called GTIA, which in the 8-bit Atari generates color for the image previously created by the antique image processor and the so-called sprites and missiles, which means characters and other small elements visible on the screen as the first layer before the main game board. You can say that both of these chips are the equivalent of a graphic card in modern devices. The problem is that you shouldn't write values to the shadow registers, only to the main registers. In addition, these registers were created for the next future versions of computers within this 8-bit family, which by the way were never created. By the way, in the Atari system, all external registers are visible as memory cells, but in practice they control the functioning of the corresponding integrated circuits, in this case the aforementioned GTIA, some other microprocessors, like for example the famous Z80, contain specialized instructions to interact with external chips, but in case of 6502C chip, this is done in the same way as accessing memory. Let's enter the correct address. Wow, finally we managed to run the program. Something works there, but the effect is far from the famous rainbow showing the palette of all available colors. Too many required fixes, don't you think? It would be much easier to write the program by myself from scratch. The program contains one more error, namely two loops were combined into one. It's time to fix it and to significantly simplify the code. I don't know why artificial intelligence came up with the idea of referring to an array in memory containing all the numbers from 0 to 31 in turn. Of course, such a solution gives you the opportunity to choose colors from the full palette. However, in the old days it was about the simplest code because old computers had low memory capacity and every byte was worth its weight in gold. Otherwise, the entire program or game would not fit in memory. Not to mention that the famous rainbow is about showing all possible colors and they are, depending on the mode, 128 or 256 and not just 32. The program has been sufficiently simplified to get the same effect as planned by artificial intelligence. Only, it's still not the famous rainbow we expected.
Let's go back to our chat with artificial intelligence. I'm asking for corrections and I'm getting apologies and a new version of the program even worse than the previous one. Why? Because here even the names of the instructions are not for 6502 C processor. For example, the LDAA command was not present in this assembly language. However, such an instruction exists for example in some Motorola processors. This is a bit of exaggeration. Theoretically, MOS and Motorola have common roots. But to try to throw the source code from one to the other? No, it will not work. Ok, but our artificial intelligence is still a baby and it has still to learn a lot. Thus you have to be nice. I'm suggesting that I fix the code myself. Let's see what such a famous rainbow should look like. I'm going to show you a very elegant code using interrupts, so it's a higher class from a Polish magazine from those years. Of course, that's just one of the possibilities. There were plenty of such programs at the time and practically every self-respecting IT magazine probably printed a similar listing on their pages, perhaps even several times in different issues. Are we running? Can you see the difference? Yes, you can see. For comparison, please take a look at the program written by artificial intelligence, in which I had to make a lot of corrections. Would I hire such an AI system instead of an experienced developer? The answer is simple, definitely not. I received a code far from being perfect, not optimal and require many corrections. And most importantly, it's not what the client order. Although of course one could argue a bit here whether the order was enough precisely defined or in the language of IT specialists whether the requirement specification was detailed enough. On the other hand, if the requirements were not clear, the system should ask first for more details and not start writing the code. And that was also the purpose of this exercise. How would I rate this AI system? I grew up with simple 8-bit computers and consoles in a time when games had very simple graphics and music and sometimes only the imagination allowed to understand the idea of the game. Hence for me the ability to talk to the computer in a natural language and a conversation in which the other party gives a lot of valuable comments and information is an amazing step forward. If the IT world has made such a great progress over the past 40-50 years, what will computers look like in the next 40-50 years? There is also a question here about the assumptions of this system. Artificial intelligence is not a creature that develops on its own and independently. Rather, it's the creators who design certain frames in which it functions. As far as I know, in the case of this system, the goal is defined quite differently. It is about communicating naturally with the user in their own language, not focusing on providing correct and reliable information. Yes, it has been admitted that the system can sometimes be wrong, not to say that it can even lie or confabulate. If the goal is defined in this way, then I am impressed. By the way, sometimes people also pretend to be specialists in some fields, not really knowing the subject matter. They lie, they fabricate, and sometimes they are not even aware of of their incompetence. So, is this another proof of the artificial intelligence development? Hmm. The question is, however, when it will be possible to combine the provision of correct information with a natural conversation and taking specific actions as a result. When buying a new laptop, will it be possible to ask for reliable advice, order a device for home, and then file a complaint in case of problems? Today such systems will certainly not write programs, but who knows if over time they will not significantly facilitate and accelerate software development. Perhaps they will deal with, for example, writing some simple functions or testing software, perhaps only in certain limited area. Finally, a little surprise. Chat with AI system and trying to make it answer which legendary computer was better. Atari 800XL or Commodore 64. Stay healthy.